baby thanks for tuning in and just to use that stanley cup analogy one more time we are at the end of the second period and heading into period three the home stretch of horror fest 2023 19 nights to rock we got a longer one this year than usual we are now 12 down with one week to go. Siete noches, boys. And it has been a hell of a horror fest so far. Night one, Friday the 13th, part six. Jason Lives, 1986. Uh, night two, Island of the Doomed, 1967. Night three, Friday the 13th, part six. Seven, The New Blood, 1988. Night Four, Trilogy of Terror, 1975. Night Five, Horror High, 1974. Night Six, Splatter University, starring Dick Beale, uh, 1984. Night Seven, The House on Haunted Hill, 1958. Night Eight, Dream, uh, Scream Time, 1983. Night um, night nine was uh, Carnival Blood, 1970. Night 10, Cat People, 1942. Night 11, House of Ghosts, 1906. That takes us to last night's feature presentation, night 12 of Horror Fest. I talked about this yesterday in yesterday's video, how I might have to do a one for all the marbles and let the contestants decide. I did, and I gave uh, Free Jack Balls, the winner of the one for all the marbles, the choice of five plots. He picked the plot E, which happened to be the Amityville Horror 1979. So we have our fourth 1970s film entry into Horror Fest 2023. Now this film is not great. It is a well known in the horror genre and certainly in the haunted house subgenre. It's the third haunted house film of of uh, Horror Fest 2023, the house on the house on Haunted Hill, and then the night before last, House of Ghosts, and then followed up by the Amityville Horror. So a nice little theme the last two nights. It did well at the box office. It had some big name actors. It had a, it had a big budget. Didn't do 
too great as far as the critics when it came out. It didn't do well with, it hasn't done well with like modern critics. DPCX said that he saw this in the theaters when it came out and how it was billed to be the scariest film you've ever seen. It's got some true scary moments, but it's not incredibly scary. Now this film, despite all that, has a special place in my heart because this was, I believe, the first horror film I ever saw. Uh, this was like 20 years ago, and I was, you know, much younger, and I just, my tastes were like drama and comedy. And I just never watched horror. I've just assumed it was all like people getting their heads chopped off, which is a very bad, uh, <laughs> very bad assumption, very irrational assumption as I would find out later this one I watched with a couple people rented it and from a video store not Blockbuster but another one and uh, it wasn't my idea it was someone else's idea and I liked it I, the thing I liked about it this the thing that stood out about it and I talk about this a lot in horror films the atmosphere of this film was something that stuck with me. I'd never seen anything quite like that that just had that feeling of, and it was and it was big budget, yet it had that it still had that kind of grainy look. It had that great that nice late '70s look to it. Cold late fall atmosphere, leaves coming down, just the shots of the house. The outside, James Brolin chopping wood, and everything else that kind of came with it. Just uh, kind of that, kind of that eerie, dark, um, grainy camera kind of atmosphere. It was the first movie I'd really, with with fear involved, with the threat of something bad happening. And I took that with me and kind of, I think it was kind of the thing that led to getting interested when like Friday the 13th part 2 came on TV and going hmm and getting kind of that same feeling so it despite all that it's a film that I haven't seen in probably 11 12 years it's nothing great that I come back to for like nostalgia purposes but I was glad that Free Jack picked it last night it was the first it's the first time this film has been in horror fest uh, well the first time it's been recorded since 20 you know 2016 so and things just picked up certain things from it uh, I still think that Amityville so Amityville 2 made it last year Amityville 3 made it a couple years ago horrible film and then Amityville I think 5 I think it was the one from 89 with like Patty Duke that one made it like back in 2016 so this is the first year the original has come out I have no interest in the remake of 2005 that goes Ryan Reynolds <laughs> so James Brolin I've always liked in this he has a good uh, temperament on screen with his, his stress and the way he plays having that really bad flu and it's in the crumbling of his domestic life and the way it makes you think that the he might be starting to get possessed himself. I like his look as well in this film. Margot Kidder is good, turns in a good performance. Probably the best scene, one of the, my favorite scenes in the film isn't even one of the scary ones, but it's in the office, in the little meeting of the priests with uh, Rod Steiger, who is the third build in this film and gets, I guess he gets enough screen time, but Boy, it, that scene, if if you've ever seen Rod Steiger in any film, anyone knows that that boy, he can chew a scene, and he really does it well in that scene. Man, he is good in that one. You have Murray Hamilton and uh, John Larch also in there in the room. Two big name actors. I mean, two veteran, very good actors who really, that's their only scene in the whole movie. John Larch barely says anything. He's got some 
some facial things acting going, but that's about it. And Murray Hamilton in his, does a great job with his uh, uh, scolding of Steiger when he, uh, you know, because they're not buying how Steiger says he hears voices and how he he knew that the Ronald DeFeo had heard voices before he killed his family. And just the way he, you know, talks to St the way Murray Hamilton talks to Steiger, like it's just awesome. Um, everybody says that the voices told me to do it, and then, and then his sit down your arrogance your little secular education doesn't give you the right to usurp us or whatever but it's a, it's a great uh it's an excellent scene they tell him to go on vacation the the fourth guy in the room is played by don stroud and i really like he gets more time than the other two than larch and hamilton i really like his role in this kind of a kind of calm natured and really wants to minister to Steiger especially after the after he goes blind and kind of goes crazy he has a good demeanor in this Don Stroud is one of the other priests and also like the uh the guy uh, forget forget the actor's name but he's a he's kind of like a colleague of of James of James Brolin George Lutz is the character James Brolin plays a colleague of Lutz who is trying to keep him keep him in line and tell him you need to come back to work and uh, you know there's uh you got these people calling you in the IRS and he's uh he, he looks a lot like the guy from Omen 3 one of the monks that gets killed by the dogs and he's all this guy and that guy is also in the Empire Strikes Back. I forget his name too, but he kind of looks like him in the face. But this guy, I, I really like his performance in Amityville. In the Amityville horror. It's just, uh, just the way he kind of packs on more stress to George Lutz and then ends up getting punched in the face <laughs> in the bar. Don't you have any good news? It's uh, real relatable too. So I like his performance. Uh, the Lutz daughter has the most screen time of the three kids uh, it's natasha ryan you might remember from you soap opera fans she's a she was in one soap opera forget what which one but she has a lot of good it's very expressive in the face in this film and another easter egg in this movie one of the lutz kids is played by casey martell which i never realized that casey martell plays one of the Lutz boys he was in he was one of the guys on the camping trip with Kevin Bacon in Whitewater Summer 1987 so nine years prior so he was probably 15 in that movie at the oldest so he must have been seven eight something like that in Amityville so all right so this film Amityville Horror, 1979, last night's feature presentation. I'd say it holds up pretty well uh, compared to other late, you know, 70s horror films. It holds up about as well as Omen, 1975. So, 76, sorry. So, that's, I mean, that says a lot right there. It's, you know, got, got some cheese in there. And it's a little slow paced. So, it's a little bit like Friday the 13th, 1980, in that it's, a, it's original well respected but it's got kind of a slow pacing to it i still say amityville 2 the possession from 1982 is the best of the films in this franchise as far as the franchise goes i'm not a fan of this franchise i've tried to get into to follow through it but to no avail amityville 2 being the best and it's got it's got some cheese to it too it's just a, you know, a little little faster pace a little more uh, intense scenes in there. Uh, the actor who plays Ronald DeFeo <laughs> looks nothing like James Brolin. 
And, and that's a, that was one of the errors in the film when they say, you know, you're the spinning image of that DeFeo kid, the bartender. And then De, uh, Lutz's wife looks at the microfiche thing at the library, sees the picture of Ronald DeFeo after he was arrested, right after the murders, and, and it's a shot of James Rowland, you know. But uh, he looks nothing like <laughs> in Amityville 2. Amityville 3, 1983 in 3D. I used to like this as far as a so good, so bad it's good kind of thing. I've turned the, I've really done a 180 on that. It's now I don't like it at all. It's so bad. And so I don't enjoy that movie at all. And then after that, whew, there's, there's just really bad. It's like a lot of made for TV stuff. And uh, so I'm not a fan of this franchise at all. It's got one good a very good film and then it's got one being part two the prequel and then the one the original is just you know, good at best so not a big fan of this franchise uh will it come back next year you know possibly i would recommend watching this during horror fest late in horror fest if it's cold outside leaves are coming down you know kind of dark skies i would recommend giving it a shot if you haven't seen it already so we are now into this has been the longest video of the updates of horror fest 2023 hope you've enjoyed horror fest 2023 if you've made it this far in the video thanks for watching this uh premiere i tell you what guys um as we come down the stretch of horror fest it's not what it's not ideal this is not ideal weather i would rather it be cool i'd rather it be a little dark you know outside a little cloudy overcast but it's not so we're gonna have from now until monday we got 70s and up to 80s here so <laughs> it kind of wrecks the uh it's just one of those things it's beyond your control uh, you got to make the best of it Got to choose certain movies that, that fit the that fit the uh, weather. I'm a big believer in that. I may have to go with Bog just because of that. I may have to go with Blood Beach if it gets really hot. Who knows? A little Burt Young tribute. And uh, all right, so tonight's feature presentation again. Again, I think we're going to go with, unless something really is pressing on me, you got to watch this tonight. I believe we're going to do a one for all the marbles. Again, to make a selection, a plot selection. So, because it's just kind of, look around, boys. Nice foot. It's warm out here. It's like 75 right now. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. We are down to, this is night 13, maybe only 13 ghosts. Darth, maybe it'll be Friday the 13th. Part 3, 3D. Who knows? All I know is, it is night 13. Make it a good one. No baseball tonight. No football tonight. That means you can really focus in, dial in on Horror Fest as we come down to the final seven days and we got at the start of this we had 19 nights to rock and now we got yeah.